Hello everyone, my name is Nisha. We are talking about gaslighting. In very simple terms, gaslighting is a form of manipulation that often occurs in abusive relationships. It is a subtle type of emotional abuse that results in victims feeling unsure about their perceptions of reality and the world around them. Before we proceed, I'd like to introduce you all to Anupama Rao, who is my colleague, who is my colleague at Pran and uh, the lead of the volunteer initiative program. Uh, hi Anu, I hope you're doing well. Uh, today, uh, she'll be the one answering the questions that have been asked to us by our uh, volunteers. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Nisha, for that introduction. Uh, um, yeah, um, welcome everybody to our "You Ask, We, we Answer" uh, session at Pran. So today our topic is gaslighting. So a little bit to talk about gaslighting. Gaslighting is a form of a psychological abuse where which the the person or the group causes someone a kind of an insult to, uh, you know, uh, to make that person uh, believe who they are. So we find uh, when we talk about gaslighting, we can find them in the simplest forms in our lives. Uh, sometimes these people are not even aware that they're gaslighting someone, but these can leave very, very, you know, deep psychological dents in a person's perception, confidence. So that's what we are going to be here talking about. We have a few questions our volunteers have sent, and I'm very, very happy here to answer that. So Nisha, can you go up with the first question, please? Uh, yeah, the first question is actually not about gaslighting, but, in, uh, but about mental health in general. Uh, according okay. to, uh, our volunteer is asking, what can be termed as a stable mental health, and how can we maintain the stability of our mental health? Mental health is basically a well-being of a physical, emotional, uh, and mental state of mind. So to keep our mind and our mental state stable, we have to learn uh, healthy behaviors. We have to have regular exercise, good food, good sleep. That is very, very important for someone uh, to maintain a good mental health. So these are the three things you need to have. Uh, need to follow to have a good stable mental health i hope i answered that question that was very clear anu thank you uh, the second question is how do we realize if we have been gaslighting somebody and we learn we learn our new ways and we learn how to apologize to them so it depends on the gas gaslighter so sometimes uh like I told, perceive things which is, you know, not true or, uh, you know, makes you believe something that is not real. That is what a basically a bas ba gas. Some people knowingly do this. To some people do this, um, you know, to derive some kind of, a, uh, you know, have control over the other person. Uh, they sometimes do out of superiority, you know, inferiority complex. Sometimes they want to feel superior and they must be doing, they would be doing those things also. So it all depends on, um, you know, whether this person is consciously doing, uh, whether they are unconsciously doing. Sometimes it's a learned behavior. Sometimes they would have seen people doing that to them and they think that is the way of, you know, talking or controlling or having control over someone's thoughts. They think that this is the way they should do it. So sometimes it's not uh, conscious, one sometimes it's unconscious. Okay. Uh, what are some common forms of gaslighting and how do we know if someone is gaslighting us? So like we already spoke about it, um, insisting about things, insisting that this is the way it is. You are thinking wrong. This is not the way it is. You are thinking, you know, you're imagining certain things. These are all the kind of things that, you know, somebody will be telling. And then when you actually know to a fact that you are actually being misled or that person is trying to push them, their thoughts into you, you know, somebody is gaslighting you. Could you please give us some examples of how gaslighting actually takes place? So some of the signs I would say is, you know, they're hypercritical. You know, when you find people who are hypercritical, they are judgmental. They're so judgmental of anything. Even if you come up with an idea, they would say things like, oh, so you know it. So you know all. You know, these are the kind of things they would do. 
they do not have an answer. But even when you come up with something, or if you have a suggestion, they always want to be very, very critical. They want to be judgmental. They ignore their boundaries. They would say, so what happened the last time you did? What did you do the last time? So what happened then? Why didn't you apply the same thing? See, it is all about, you know, demeaning the person, demotivating the person. That is basically what that person is trying to do. So these are all signs that you can look out for. And they become very possessive and controlling. That is also one more thing. They don't allow you to even think what you're thinking. They don't even allow you to have your own thoughts. They want to be very positive. They don't want you to think different. They want you. They want to be in every space of yours. They want to know how you're thinking. They want to. They want to control your thinking. So these are all the kind of signs that you can look out, and then you can always say, you know, you know what I've been. Uh, you know, I'm. I think I'm. I'm not. I'm forced to think like this. I understand that, that this is gaslighting, and you can definitely keep away from these people by, of course, you know, uh, uh, self-assuring yourself, educating yourself, keeping yourself in positive thoughts, believing in yourself. All these things are the things that you can do against people who are gaslighting you. Was that? Uh, was that answer good enough for you, Nisha? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. When you see it happen, okay. it feels, it's very perspective. Yeah, uh, it is. It is. You know, most of the time, like as I'm talking to you, and I'm, you know, as I'm telling you, there are, you know, you always, when you talk about gaslighting, you always go back into your thoughts, you know? Yeah. Actually, somebody did that to me. Somebody, you know, I remember this person actually did this to me. So everybody has, you know, incidences that they can always relate to when it comes to gaslighting. Yeah. Why do you think people want to gaslight others? Like, what is it that drives them to do it? What is the motive behind this? If I have to just tell you in one single word, if I have to tell you, it's a power play. It's just a power play. They just feel more powerful. And they feel that they have taken this position in your life to be that powerful person, to control your thought process, to control the way you think. And it could also, like I told you earlier, it, it could be a learned behavior. It could be something that their father has done or an uncle has done or a grandfather has done We or, or anybody else, a teacher could have done, anybody could have done. So basically it's a power play. They just want to have power over you. They want to control the way that you think and they, yeah, and they think that that is the only way they can control you. So it is basically, it's a power play. That's what it is. That's why a person would do it. Right. Uh, so, for example, what, would, what are the suggestions you would give somebody who's being gaslighted? Like, what would you recommend them doing to, you know, build their trust, build their self-confidence and, you know, just be more aware of the situation? So... What you could do is that you can, um, like like you said, like I said earlier, also, um, you can uh, educate yourself. You can surround yourself with people who are more positive. You can surround yourself with people who can share ideas. You can change your group of people. That you can do. You know, even if you are part of a family, you can always, you know, change your group of people you hang out with. So that way you are able to share your ideas. You are able to express yourself. It is basically everybody needs to express. Self-expression self is the most important. And if there is no space to express, right. it can be quite claustrophobic too. So making new groups, educating yourself, you know, reading a lot about this, um, you know, being in groups that you are, that encourage you, empower you. Um, helps you express, helps you have, you know, exchange of ideas. All these things will be, you know, the steps that the person has to take uh, to overcome, uh, you know, fear, you know, the feeling that you've been gaslighted. Right. Uh, so like, when we're talking about the abusers, the ones who gaslight us, do you think they have some like particular kind of people they are looking out for, you know, to gaslight? Uh, who are the more uh, susceptive to uh, being gaslit? Um, I would just say that uh, someone who is a little um, 
timid, you know, that person is always targeted. I, I hate to use the word timid because all of us have all kinds of personalities in us we yeah. have our uh, you know personality where we can be outgoing sharing empowering at the same time there can be one one of the relationships where you can have uh you know uh, you will be timid yeah hello uh, I can so, Nisha, so, I, so like I said, um, you know, the, it is most of, mostly a person who's timid, who's actually targeted. And these people who are gaslighting, who are the gaslighters, they'll always look for this person. They look for a timid student. They look for a timid classmate. They will look for a timid member in the family. They will go and they will... Uh, you know, nudge them, say things to them. Uh, you know, they think they, uh, they think that by doing that, they feel superior. They feel that, you know, they've been able to have a say on something. So all this comes basically out of not being confident themselves. Right. So would you say being underconfident is one of the key uh, factors why somebody would be more susceptible to being athletic? Uh, yes, definitely, I would say that uh, definitely I would say a person who feels underconfident will definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, be attracted towards to these kind of people. And um, and when they do it, they take it to their full form. They think that they have the power to do this to this person. They they try to alter their thoughts. They try to alter their thinking, everything they try to do, which, you know, which they think they can have control on. That's what they do. Right. So how do you deal with such a person? How do you deal with somebody who's close to you, like a family member or a very good friend of yours or your partner? How do you deal with them uh, when they're gaslighting you? So, you know, it's um, like I, I already I told you, when you have a family member, it is difficult for you to uh, avoid because they are family. Uh, so what happens is that you should always, uh, uh, like I said, um, you know, educate yourself, empower yourself, speak up for yourself, speak up for yourself with confidence, write notes, keep a journal, document the feelings you are having. And when you document the kind of feelings you have, you will be able to address it. So the next time that person is there, you know, when it's a family member, you know that you're going to see that person again. If it is it was in, in some other family gathering, you know the next family gathering they are going to be there. So when you know that, you can go well understood of your position that he thinks he holds you. And then when they speak like that, you can always confront them by saying that, you know, well, what, you're, what you're trying to say, why are you saying this to me? Right. You know, but in fact, in fact, this is what I'm trying to say. Do you think that what I'm saying is not right? Do you think you have another opinion? Can you just share your opinion with me? This be the best way to deal with somebody who is in a family, you know, or any any member that you're going to be seeing, whether it's a friend, yeah, anybody who it is, unless and until you confront them and you tell them how you are feeling about it. And you by telling, do you know by the things that by the way you're speaking to me, it is a very it is it is demoralizing me. When you say such things, actually the person may not even know that person is gaslighting. Right. Sometimes that also happens. The person is unaware. Like I said, it's a learned behavior. Somewhere he has seen, she has seen something and then he continues to do that behavior. So by, by confronting, by telling them, do you know what you're trying to say? This is what I mean when I say this and what you're doing to me is actually demoralizing me. That person might actually realize something and step back. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. But uh, like how, uh, for example, it's a friend who's gaslighting me and they are unaware of it. So how do you teach them, you know, how do you tell the person that, hey, you know what, this is what you're doing to me? Like I said to you, Nisha, you have to tell them, you have to tell them in that many words. Like that's why I said when you document something, 
when you you know keep it documented when you read through those things when you are you know most of the time what happens is when you recollect these things and when you tell them they try very very hard to deny it they are going to say you are just imagining you are just thinking all these things this never happened you know what were you thinking all these kind of words they would say so it's always difficult to corner them so mm -hmm. it is better that you tell them that straight up by telling them that you know what you're telling right now is a lie you know what happened and yeah. this is what you said to me and this is what happened to me and this is not in good taste if it is a friend you can always tell to that friend that you know uh, this this relationship is not helping me to grow so you can express these things and when you do so if that person is a real friend that person will correct themselves if they want to be part of your life right that's so true uh, so i know those were the questions from my side i would now invite imam iman i'm yeah. sorry if you have any other questions to ask anu yeah thank you for explanation and if a person <coughs> is in dominating in behavior means he is a or he has argumentative behavior then can you say that uh, that person could be the uh, uh, gaslighter i didn't get your question imam can you repeat it please if a person mm -hmm. so he has dominating behavior or dominating is, behavior yeah, yeah. argumentative behavior he has okay so can the person uh, be the uh, gaslighter mostly people who are gaslighters are very dominating they are very argumentative they are argumentative to the extent that they want to not make you believe that what you thinking is reality like i would just tell you if it is a husband who is or, or a wife who is you know having a extra marital affair that person you know even if she finds out some truth about something if she is going to find out some details about it he is going to say you know what all this is coming out of insecurity you know what you are telling all these things because you are, you don't trust me uh, you, you know all these things are the words they will use so that is how they you know that is how they try to get above you so a person who is uh, argumentative is different dominating is different that is that is different in today's in the subject as gaslighting i would say they can be dominating in the sense that they might dominate your thoughts itself they might try to change your thoughts itself they might make you feel that actually you are hallucinating or you're you're, you're just imagining things that's what they would do so i would just say that in this situation when a person is argumentative or dominating uh, you know they are a different personality but if you say the same thing in a gaslighting yes the person who is gaslighting will be argumentative because they want to fight their cause they want you not to believe you know they do they want to get rid of the thought that you have in your mind so they'll make sure that you argue so much that you will start to think like that that would happen okay did i in india means every political leader every day gas like it us <laughs> there is i think no argument <laughs> and uh, there are so much caste system and suppose in class a teacher could be the also the gas lighter so in that case um, in in family in family suppose the elder members elder members could be the gas lighter then what kind of the solution because for the junior members or the students the because uh, in our society we always learn that um, respect the elders okay yeah it's a great burden for the students that he cannot confront or to, to, to his teachers or to, to elders that he or she might be gaslighter yeah so in that then what could be the solution for the, those uh, means junior to junior means for the junior or uh, the younger persons so um i uh, thank you imam that was a very very good question that you asked yes when somebody is in in a in a more powerful position than you are like a teacher you said like a elder in the family you said 
So it is very difficult because, um, uh, you know, to take insults or to being gaslit like that, it is very, very difficult. Yes, what you can do when you have your teacher doing that, when you feel that that person is doing that to you, the teacher is doing to you. You can go and speak to another teacher with whom you have a relationship with. You can speak to them and you can tell them, you can express to them. If you have confidence to them in them to talk, so you can go and speak to them and tell them, this is how I feel. And I'm not able to express this to my class. In fact, in my, to my teacher, in fact, I'm, I'm not doing well in my class because of this, because I'm not feeling confident. It makes me underconfident. You can tell to teachers and nowadays in schools, you have counselors. You have counselors in school. You, if not counselors, there'll be one teacher. Definitely there is one teacher to whom you can go and talk. So you will be able to go and talk. When it comes to a family member, an elder family member, again, you can reach out to another relative to whom you can express yourself. Or if you have another relative also feeling like that, you can go and express to that that relative and two relatives together can go and speak to a uh, you know elderly relative and say that this grandpa is telling this to me and this is how I feel about it. And it will, it will be expressed to that person in the best of interest. So that kind of a thing can be done. You, you must take support from someone to express yourself if you are not able to go and express yourself directly. You don't need to be in that kind of an abuse because that is also like a starting, I told, it is a psychological abuse. Gaslighting is a psychological abuse. Yeah. And it can cause a lot of mental fatigue, trauma, low confidence, stress, anxiety, fear. It can, it can, it can bring in delusion. It can bring a lot of things. So definitely it is something that needs to be addressed and needs to be taken help for also. A person who is a ga being gaslit, you know, a person who is a gaslighter also needs therapy. A person who is un in that situation being, being abused also needs therapy. Both of them need therapy because the person who is gaslighting doesn't sometimes know that he is actually having an effect, this kind of an effect on that other person. I hope I answered your question, Imam. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any other questions you have? No. As of now, not any questions. Okay. Thank you. Why Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. So, uh, little members are today's in meeting? Uh, there, there were a few members, a few of our volunteers who wanted to join. You were one of them. So, we were happy to have you, Imam, with us. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for joining, Imam. Thank you. Yes, Nisha, is there any other questions? Uh, no, I know. We are done with all our questions. Thank you for providing such a great insight in, onto the topic. Um, right. Yeah, so somewhere to say about, uh, you know, just to finish up this, um, I'm, I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy to talk about um, this topic on gaslighting, uh, which we find, uh, you know, in uh, very common in our, you know, among us. Uh, it is one of those things that is, is so negligible. People neglect it. They do not realize home, uh, you know, housewives are struggling with it, whether it is being from their in-laws or their husband. Um, there are so many people who are, uh, who are in a job and they have their bosses who do this. There are there are students like how Imam said, where teachers make them feel that. So it is it is so common and it is the most negligent uh, form of abuse. They do not even realize that that this is also abuse. I'm so happy to be you know addressing gaslighting here. I'm uh, I'm thankful for all the questions and I hope I answered these questions uh, all these questions to you all. We can have another session of this if you have more questions the next time. But until then, thank you all for joining us, um, um, Imam, for joining us. And thank you, Nisha, for initiating this. Thank, thank you, you so much, Anu. Thank you. Miss Anu, a little bit correction. This is Iman, not Imam. Iman. Iman. Okay. Im all right, Iman. In. Yeah. All right. Thank I you. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nisa, also. Thank you.
ওইটা না